why aren't there as many species here as there are in, in Appalachia? Um, and then if you start to compare, well, maybe you start to come up with these hypotheses, like in the Pacific Northwest, you have dominate in here, you have forest dominated by conifers. Um, whereas back home, you have forest dominated by flowering, uh, flowering trees. And you could start to come up with hypotheses. Well, maybe it's total annual precipitation. The total amount of rain that you get um, is what decides whether or not a forest is conifer dominated or deciduous uh, you know, flowering tree dominated. And um, it's not that simple because around Seattle in the Pacific Northwest and East Tennessee you get about the same amount of precipitation, total precipitation, but it's the seasonality of it that really makes a difference. And so in the Pacific Northwest they have really wet winters and very dry summers. So water is most limiting when temperature is most conducive to growth. And that, that gives rise to conifer dominated forests. Whereas in, in Tennessee, East Tennessee, uh, precipitation is generally fairly consistent across the year and so flowering plants have a have more competitive advantage and broadleaf trees have competitive advantage back there. I'm Frosty Levy. I'm, uh, I'm a botanist and I, I work at ETSU. What characterizes the forests in our region are their diversity. You know we can walk around here and in 15 minutes we'll find 40 different species of trees and that's what makes us unique. You can do that in New, New England and you'll find six, ten. But we could just stand here and go Fraser magnolia, red maple, uh, sugar maple, locust, um, American ash, yellow birch, um, <laughs> you know, red oak right there in the canopy. Uh, here's another ash, there's a buckeye. We have a dozen by just, you know, cursory look around. Rhododendron, magnolias, the buckeyes, the basswood, the hemlocks, huge tulip poplars, which are, it'll take 10 people to put their arms around one. And gigantic yeah. white yeah. oaks. Sycamores. Sycamores, it, it also has a, a maple-like leaf. But the easy idea is, you look for a tree that has smooth bark and has initials carved in it. <laughs> and what is it? <laughs> Anybody know? Beach. You know, people love to carve their initials in beach trees. And, and I, I plead guilty when I was a kid. <laughs> A lot of diversity right here in this in this area of the Northern Rockies, um, but it pales in comparison to the Appalachian forests. Um, and you know, I think there was about a five-acre plot of mine in, in Western Virginia had 65 or 67 tree species or woody species, and we have only about 25 to 30 in the whole state of Montana. Yeah. Uh, so much. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the things, so I can talk about the diversity, I can talk about the fall colors, I can talk about the spring wildflowers, but it's the, it's the songs of the forest that I really miss more than about anything. I miss the, you know, the wood frogs in the early spring and the spring peepers and the chorus frogs and the, you know, the katydids at night uh, in September and the, the cicadas. I miss that, the music of the woods back there. Um, 
so much. I mean, that, that to me is, is when I close my eyes, those are the things that I, I long for, um, are, are those songs, for sure. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff is important too, the diversity, I miss all of that, but I can find enough to keep me interested out here and learning about, but, but I can't, there's nothing, I mean, there's, there's a lot of noises going on right now, but it's not the same richness as, as it is back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.